Okay, now we're gonna get into puck handling and puck control. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is, first I wanna talk about our stick. Now we have a lot of kids in our program coaches who oftentimes don't have the correct length stick, whether it's too short or too long. So in order to help parents, coaches, especially since you're with them the majority of the season, and help make sure that their players have the proper length stick, the first thing we wanna do is when a player is on their skates, the stick should come up to about their chin. Now mine's a little short, but that's the type of stick I like to use. Okay, and as players get older, they will understand as forwards, they use a little bit shorter stick, defensemen will use a little bit longer stick. But that's as they get older, okay? If they're off their skates and you wanna measure a stick, you wanna make sure that it comes to about their nose. So on their skates to their chin, off their skates to their nose. Okay, now the next thing with stick handling, first we're gonna talk about our hand position. Okay? A lot of times we see kids that have incorrect hand positioning as they skate and we often have to fix it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the width of your hands and how far apart or how close they should be. You'll see a lot, especially with younger kids, where their hands get really close together or they get very far apart. A good guide for younger kids especially is to make sure that they use about a forearm length okay, away or about shoulder width apart. That's a good width for players to have as they're going to stick hand. Okay, the other thing is we want to make sure our top hand is all the way at the top of the stick. Oftentimes when kids have sticks that are too long, they'll move their hand down because they know their stick is too long. They'll move their hand down and their butt end will come out the top. Make sure that hand is all the way at the top of their stick. Now the next thing we're going to talk about with puck handling is what hand does what. Okay, we have our top hand and our bottom hand. Your bottom hand is there more to guide the stick, okay? It moves up and down the shaft of the stick, but it's there as a guide as you change and you have range of motion. Your top hand is there to control and kind of do more of a control to the puck and actually rolls as you control the puck in your stick. So your top hand, you should be able to take your top hand off and put the puck in front of you and still be able to stick handle and roll your wrist and handle the puck. Your bottom hand goes on for a guide, so if you want to go with range of motion, okay, your bottom hand moves up and down the shaft of your stick as the guide. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the different types of carries that we'll use to travel up the ice. And before we do that, I want to talk about just real quick your upper body position. Okay, similar to when you're skating, you want to have a good knee bend, good hockey position, your chest up, and you want to make sure they keep their head up. We have a lot of kids at time, especially at the younger age, that look down at the puck because they're not comfortable of having the puck on their stick and knowing where it's going to be. You want to have to try to teach them to use their peripheral vision. They should be able to look forward and look out the bottom part of their eyes and still be able to see the puck without actually looking down. Okay, so the first puck carry that we're going to talk about is actually called the push carry. A lot of times this is used when you're skating up ice and you're trying to gain speed and you don't want to slow yourself down by actually stick handling the puck. So a push carry is when you actually have your stick out in front of you and you're just pushing the puck ahead of you on your stick. For younger kids especially, we want to make sure that they do this on the forehand of their stick. Okay, it's easier to control, they can keep it out in front of them and continue to pick up speed. For older kids, they can use their forehand or they can use their backhand. A lot of times it depends on where they are on the ice, where the defenseman is and what side of the ice they're coming up, whether it's their on wing or their off wing. Okay, so as they go forward, they can use their backhand or they can use their forehand. Younger kids, typically we want them to use their forehand. Now as we demonstrate the push carry, notice Coach Justin as he goes, he's going to extend his arm out in front of him as he moves across the ice. Uh, we also mentioned too that the push carry is used in open ice when there's no opposition around or on a breakaway to accelerate and, and get away from your opponent. Okay, the next carry we're gonna talk about is the narrow carry. Narrow carry is typically used in tight spaces when you're trying to protect the puck, maybe in the corner, down low, along the boards, okay? And it keeps it close to your body and it keeps it within your feet. So the first thing we wanna make sure is we're not going too wide. 
you have a good base with your feet, good hockey position, okay? And it typically will stay in between your feet. You're not going any wider than that. Again, your top hand controls your stick and you wanna make sure you roll your wrist. So as I move, I roll my wrist. I cup it with the back hand, okay? So I can then pull it back to my forehand. Notice how my stick is always cupped over the puck and not straight up and down here. The next thing you want to make sure is when you're doing this, whether it's this narrow carry or the ones we're going to talk about later, you want to make sure your hand is off your hip. You do not want to have your hand attached to your hip and try to stick handle with that hand on your hip. You want your stick and your hands away from your body. Now we're going to demonstrate the narrow carry as we move down the ice. talk about is a wide carry. Okay, a wide carry is oftentimes used to either to fake out a defenseman okay, or to fake out a goalie, but oftentimes it's used to make some kind of deep or to protect the puck as you're going around a defenseman. So the wide carry okay, goes outside your feet. Again, this is where your bottom hand is very important and it moves up and down the shaft of your stick because as it moves, you need to have good range of motion. That's also why your top hand cannot be attached to your hip and your arms need to be free. Again, your top hand helps control and cuff the puck. Bottom hand helps guide the stick and stay wide outside your feet and so you can deke or make a move. Now we're going to demonstrate the wide carry. The next one and the last one we're gonna talk about is the side carry. The side carry is used in two different situations. It's used by defensemen, typically when they're moving backwards and they're getting ready to make a pass, or it's moved by forwards, typically when they're moving forward towards the net, they're getting ready to shoot or make a pass to maybe back door. Now the biggest thing that you have to make sure with a side carry is that obviously the puck is on the side of your body. This really forces players to have to use their peripheral vision. Again, you cannot have your hands attached to your hip. You need your hands free so you can have good range of motion and can move and reposition your stick wherever it needs to go on your side. Peripheral vision is key. You need to be able to keep your head up and look out the corner of your eye and still be able to handle that puck so you can pass it as a defenseman or shoot it as a forward. Now we will demonstrate the side carry, moving backwards like a defenseman would do, carrying the puck. Next, we'll demonstrate the side carry, like a forward, getting ready to make a pass or take a shot. <laughs> 